Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be taking a look at the Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz, Daredevil graphic novel, Love and War. Love, love and War, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do, I want to invite you guys to like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel to hit the bell icon so that uh, you can be notified whenever we have new videos. That helps mitigate the kayfabe effect whenever we talk about something like this. Uh, it might go quickly. You know, a lot of our books that we talk about out of print, uh, unbeknownst to us, few copies uh, left on Amazon, few copies left on eBay, they disappear quick to the people who have that bell hit on their videos. And uh, if you watch these videos to the end, it really helps the channel out because uh, that lets YouTube know that these are valuable videos, sends those videos out to other comic book loving YouTube viewers who have not yet seen Cartoonist Kayfabe, grows our channel numbers uh, exponentially, which was what has been uh, the case the past couple of months, and we really appreciate it. But uh, without further ado, we've been meaning to get to this uh, graphic novel for a very, very long time. Let's uh, let's let's hit it, man. But what what is this big book you got here? This Jimmy? is a recent uh, collection. It collects Electra Assassin and it collects the Daredevil Love and War. And uh, the reason that I bring this, Ed, is because so uh, Love and War is the first one that's reprinted in here. And you'll notice page one is on the right hand side, like page ones are. Right. Page one in the graphic novel is on the left hand side, and uh, it made me think like, what was the intention? This is shocking to me if this was the intention of the creators because it's atypical of every single book that's ever been printed in the history of books. Right. So you have 400 years of history suggesting that these are not the spreads that they conceived. So uh, here's the conundrum, Jimmy. Should should we look at the big book or should we look at the should we look at the the OG? It's your call because this is the one I think everybody has. Yeah. This is the one that I have, you know, in This in looks first like a spread. Read. They do. They're broken into like these two-page pieces, and you know it's 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 interesting because we always think the page turn reveals something. This looks like a spread. It's true. Um, so I don't know if you want to look at something that would be different for most of the people who follow at home and you know have this graphic Let's, novel. I think of the graphic novel maybe Marvel's best graphic novel. I know people of, of think of like 64. Death of Captain Marvel, and that's reasonable. But this is a masterpiece Absolutely. of this format. Yeah, I mean it's 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 ridiculous to think that I like that the death of Captain Marvel, which was yes, it gets the price for being the first, but come on, man, this thing, there's a lot of spinning plates. Here's on the this other comic. thing that I want to mention in terms of the page, you know, that left right thing. Again, we say the left page, you know, you can have a you can have a surprise on there. The right hand page costs more. You know, like when I worked in advertising, we would fight for the right hand page. We would buy package deals that would include the right hand page. Uh, we would give people shit if we didn't get the right-hand page. The right-hand pages are more valuable. When you're flipping through something to be like, do I want to buy this comic? You see stuff on the right-hand page. So from, like in every other industry of publishing, the right-hand page is your is your prime page. It's only in comics that we go, put that really great image on the left where nobody will see it. Right. So it's it's kind of backwards. It's one more backwards thing that comics do. So keep that in mind as you're looking at this and just remember that these spreads are opposite possibly. Cartoonist Kayfabe is Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor, and the best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy our the books that we make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Cartoonist Kayfabe is Ed Piscor and Jim Rugg, two working cartoonists. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the books that we make. And here's what's available from Ed Piscor. WYSIWYG, Portrait of a Serial Hacker, is about the history of computer hacking. X-Men, Grand Design, the, uh, the the beginning of the Grand Design franchise, starts with X-Men. This is a complete retelling of the history of X-Men. The first 30 years is one epic, continuous story across three volumes, or in one giant, oversized volume, if you can find that one. Uh, seems like it's constantly out of print, but a beautiful volume if you can not find it. Hip Hop, Family Tree, this is a history of hip hop, as the title suggests, four oversized volumes, treasury-sized editions, telling the history of hip-hop through comics. Uh, one of your most popular books, Ed. And your current book, Red Room, The Antisocial Network, available now in print wherever books are sold. This is a collection of the first season of Red Room Comics, collecting four issues, beautifully reproduced with some great bonus material here in the back of the book. And starting in March... 
the next season. Red Room Trigger Warnings will be coming to comic book stores. This is the cover to look for. And due to some uh, issues at the distribution level, this may be the rarest of Red Room comics. So look for this one in March. And here are the covers to keep your eyes peeled for. That's your main cover. This is a variant by Ed Piscor, a variant by Peach Momoko, and a variant by yours truly. These will be in comic shops March 9th. The books of mine that are available right now, The Plain Janes, the first American young adult graphic novel, 500 pages of a bunch of high school girls who get together and start doing art around their community, a la Banksy, and get in all sorts of trouble from uh, teachers to the local police and, of course, parents and some of their fellow students. Uh, 500 pages perfect for the young adult reader or young artist in your life. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. This is my collection of Street Angel comics published by Image Comics. Eight complete full-color stories featuring the Deadliest Girl Alive, the Princess of Poverty, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard. And coming in March, Cartoonist Kayfabe Month, by the way, everyone, is my next project, Hulk Grand Design, with variant covers by Peach Momoko, Marcos Martin, Cartoonist Kayfabe's own Ed Piscor, and... Hulk Grand Design Madness coming in April, covered by Jeff Darrow on that one. And you can see the main covers here in the background. This is a retelling of the history of the Incredible Hulk, 60, celebrating 60 years of Incredible Hulk history and comic books, 500 issues, 10,000 plus pages, distilled down into two oversized, action-packed issues, perfect for the longtime Hulk fan or the first-time comics reader. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Love page one. Love the lettering. Even the layout of like the credits being a little bit different. It just speaks to like the 80s to we're doing graphic novels. We've got a designer on the team and Bill Sienkiewicz. Like it feels different. Yeah, man. And what is this guy doing? Like taping down wallpaper Amazing. swatches or something? Is he going to the Lowe's and getting a bunch of samples and then turning it into the fucking kingpin? It's, uh, they didn't even know how to pay for painted art. You know, like there's the stories of like they paid him for coloring and pen and ink or whatever because like there wasn't, this was new. This was really new at Marvel offices that you're going to do a painted comic like this. Jimmy, when I see this speckly stuff, that suggests to me that he has that air compressor and those Copic markers that you take the tip off and stick to the nozzle. And just you're going to see a lot of media spray. in this thing. Yeah, man. I think there was overlap with Electra Assassin. I, I don't know exactly how the breakdown is, but from interviews, again, this is a time period I'm fascinated by, so I would read these. His kingpin design, amazing. It's incredible. It, it almost shouldn't work. It's incredible. It's like a chicken leg arm. Yeah, it's just, it's shapes, you know, like in a weird way, it's almost like classic cartooning, uh, the idea of these shapes, but taken to an extreme level this this continues after the frank miller run you know the vanessa character mm -hmm. gets taken underground comes up for air is never the same again right and kingpin the guy who could buy anything is going to try to get her the best care ever like he dotes on this woman he cares about her so much she's the only like piece positive piece of light right. in his life that's exactly right and that's crucial to and the story. These kind of cartoon moments, face and shadow, it's so cool, like what he does. But, but back to what I was saying about Electra Assassin, I think that he's doing them simultaneously, at least for a little bit. Like he, he started with this, I think, and then maybe they had to do a little Electra Assassin to sell it, and then, you know, coming back and finishing this. I don't know the timeline, but I do think there's overlap. And he would talk about like wandering the streets of New York and trying to like figure out what he was gonna do that day, you know, like painting and pages and stuff. I mean, it's beautiful. It's really stunning stuff. Pencil, you know, graphite on the, uh, whatever he's working on there. I guess it's illustration board. It, it, I mean, I think this is probably going to be a paste up piece of paper if we were to look at the final board. Because, like, this is like some kind of watercolor paper, but this is like a linen kind of diploma paper or something. And this is, um, some of this stuff is included in the Sienkiewicz Artist Edition, which we did do a video of, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can find that in the Cartoonist Kayfabe archives and well worth your time because this is a guy who 
the artist editions were made for this stuff. Like he was doing things nobody else was doing on a comics page. Still figuring some things out. Definitely. Uh, when it comes to the like the captioning and the writing, like we have a lot of inner monologue, and the way that we've agreed to suggest that when you have numerous inner monologues is like you assign maybe a color or a shape of a caption to a different character. We don't have that here. Uh, so it's, it's usually, it's pretty clear like whose inner monologue you're dealing with, but it would just would be handled a different way. I think, um, if it was a more modern comic, check this out, man, we have this guy who's going to abduct this doctor's wife and hold her, uh, as a hostage to make the doctor work on Vanessa Kingpin's wife coming through the crowd scene, like how they're highlighted. That's really cool looking. Um, and I'll propose this again. Isn't this more of a splash page? Put that on the right-hand page. And uh, your page turn is her abduction. That's the surprise. You know, like, doesn't that make sense? Is the the one that you would keep secret? Sure, sure. Why not, man? I, I did think of very mean jokes that you could pull on this wife where she's like, I prefer Paris. And she is blind. And he's the doc like... Oh, there's the Eiffel Tower over there. Amazing. <laughs> er, er, you hear Carl Hey, fuck you, you jerk off. <laughs> oh, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of Anglos, a lot of English people over here uh, in, in Gay Paris right now. This is cool, man. We're, we're, uh, it's it's that Frank, the Frank Miller-isms mm -hmm. of the repeated verbiage. Yes. And then it's like professional, not Monday, because her name's Mondat or something. Mm -hmm. Chloroform. Like three cool captions. And then just... I love this painting, like the background paintings on there. There's a lot, like when he, when he, we get into industrial, uh, there's some there's some great stuff that that we'll be seeing, man. Quite frankly, this whole book's beautiful. Yeah. So if if if, if we don't kind of make that blanket statement, then I'm just gonna point to like almost every <laughs> panel and say I love this, I love that. Uh, but I do like it. It works really well, and there's a lot of badly painted comics. You yeah, know? I mean they're, they're they're all influenced by this stuff, man. When you get your now comics joints that are just you know tr up, up, trying to approximate Bill Sienkiewicz without the vision uh, so so we have that Victor assassin kidnapper professional guy and he's on his meds at the beginning mm -hmm. and then he slowly is like going off the meds and then uh, you see the problem that he becomes I really there's going to be a page where I point out and say like the right the lettering on this page makes my favorite page but you get little snippets of it with like these little flourishes in the lettering the little you formal know, stuff figuring out how to use the negative space that Sinkevich has as, as the doors opening into the darkness put your lettering on there it's, it's great it's so fascinating like when you try to reverse engineer try to break down a little bit of what what Sinkevich is doing and you know he's probably using some 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 photo ref absolutely to uh to figure out lighting shading stuff like that but then he just allows himself to like push it artistically like he is not tracing a photo here he's making some stuff up but there's a ground level piece of reference mm -hmm. to start this piece yeah and where some of that reference may be are things like guns that bottle well it i feels think the like lighting on her face for sure definitely but i mean i think there are there are like photocopies photos there's probably tracing in different places like this feels heavily referenced to me uh which is fine i don't care i mean that's illustration 101 uh but i know it's been circulating around on social media swipes you know and all these different things as kind of like flamed up again um it's just it's it's part of illustration it's only in comics that we that we punish that it's it's the peanut gallery like no no professional cares it's all goofballs and or professionals who are looking to get uh, twi Twitter retweets rather than uh, put in that work, man. And I, what, what you said was, when you said things were floating around the net, I thought you were going to say the Bill Sienkiewicz reference shot where he's butt naked <laughs> holding the gun behind his arm. <laughs> no. <laughs> he cuts a Might mean have to figure. put that one on screen. <laughs> he cuts a mean figure. This is funny. Daredevil stirs up shit in that bar, and then everybody, these are just guns. Like all the, all the, uh, the, the hoods in there are just firing at him. Shout out to the Karate Kid. I'm sure that's what it is. Or a and Marvel editor. <laughs> I was going to say, like, in today's world, it's Cobra Kai, man. He's, he's, uh, he continues to be relevant. Yeah, that could be the uh, car dealership. This is cool. Pulls Turk down in the man cover. And now we get into this, like, weird, surreal subterranean where he just, like, carries him off. Turk is just... 
this abused character at this point. <laughs> Daredevil's bitch. Always been, man. Like, like w- w- from from Frank Miller's entire run. Yes. Turk was Turk was catching some flack, man. Never be taken too seriously. It's uh, fun characterization of him in here because, like, the other dudes that work for Kingpin, they just they, they treat him accordingly. Like, yeah. Like you're so destroyed by Daredevil, you see him in your dreams. Just all suggestive, mm-hmm. man. Like these clearly are pipes. Uh, Daredevil makes mentions of like these like Morlock type people who were the people that had Vanessa uh, during that Frank Miller run of comics. Yeah, it's outright terror that uh, the way Turk is treated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool, man. Because like uh, Daredevil asks a question and just gives blank stares. Like, like mm-hmm. what's what's the uh, one rule of like interviewing, man? You shut your mouth and you let your subject keep talking. You keep that that silence uncomfortable, and they want to fill that space up with 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 hot air. Turk's giving it all up. This made me laugh where he's like, man, you got my pants wet. I paid 40 bucks for these. (laughs) It's such a random amount. (laughs) This kind of stuff, man. You you feel this like 10 buck a night, sweaty, gross, you know, New York hotel room or something. I love the floorboards. To me, I just think like this is this is Sienkiewicz's studio. Right with the floorboards, it reminds me so much of painting studios that I've worked in, where it's like the, the paint splattered on them. They're yeah. not, you know, not well maintained. It's just neat. Exposed pipes in the room, whatever this thing is. Like you see this in uh, Taxi Driver or whatever right. the hell that's supposed to be. Just like a loose live wire. Love all this kind of like signage whenever you get it. And he keeps this girl doped up. Mm-hmm. They call it Valium. Do they? Yeah, later on, they, they, they say Valium. Like, yeah, she has to come out of it slowly. This is a pretty good panel for that, where like maybe she's awake for a second and seeing this abductor who looks just nuts. He gets this way later, like when, when he's like off the meds, like he gets shaky. Oh, yeah, something. that's what you're seeing in the writing, is that he needs something. Yeah, like yeah. he gets real shaky. I do think it's a weird choice for Kingpin to leave this guy in charge of her. It makes me think like he just doesn't care about her. And also this is this is Goldie right out of Sin City. Totally. You know what I mean? Like you can imagine Frank Miller's script describing this as this uh what this damsel in distress kind of beautiful object in this otherwise destroyed, dirty, filthy environment. Just like you hear about uh when people take a look at like uh, masterpiece paintings and then you see like a bristle of uh of the 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 sable hair like in the paint I love seeing the Sienkiewicz mm-hmm. like underdrawing in uh, on his boards here. I like this kind of stuff too, where you know, like there's a lot of reference throughout this issue, but something like this there isn't. It's just a radiator. It's just marks on the page that we go, oh, it's a radiator, hot water radiator, uh, you know. And he's sitting on that comical stool, like a caricature of a stool, right? That he's sitting on, but it just it gets so simple, you know. Like we've established it here, it yeah. works. And if you look at that painting closely, it's just dash. It's just these Slimes. slashes of vertical paint that we go, oh yeah, it's a radiator. It's it's amazing cartooning in paint. Yeah, incredible. It's one of those things that all the painting imitators don't do. Still messing with the, his his wallpaper swatches, dude. And That's another detail ahead of its time that feels like something you'd see guys do in Photoshop today. Yeah. Yeah, just pulling textures. He's got a different shirt on. No perspective, like no vanishing points no grids or whatever yeah not worried about that just 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 make marks clear focal points all of this is just to frame the the lighted sequences in fact you have illumination on your daredevil right there (laughs) poor turk just a broken man and just the design of this victor guy it's a monkey (laughs) such a monkey face with a whoville nose man different size irises on him it's a disturbing character. It really is. Got that, that feels John like Rogers mustache. One where it was like, Bill, do something with this design. Make this guy look strange or whatever. And and uh Sienkiewicz leaning into what he can do. Look at a little this bit guy. of Francis Bacon uh painting in, in some of those marks, I mm. think. Yeah, that guy's teeth are great. <laughs> it looks like the old the dad in uh, Texas Chainsaw. 
Yeah, it feels like that's a caricature of somebody. Yeah. You know, like that's a that's a fun joke with some bullpenner or some editor or something. They'll do this stuff. When you see these faces that are too consistent in many different angles and stuff, it's like Bill Sienkiewicz knows this guy. Yeah, definitely. I think that was true when we saw Turk being interrogated. Like there was somebody that was modeling for Turk. For sure. And I mean, back again to this Sin City, like, you know, like it just feels like the way they're depicting these women in this comic, it's right out of like the crime novels of Miller's youth. Right. And Sienkiewicz is just a guy that's able to do it. Like, shine the light right on the bed. Good contrast between your yellows and golds of the light where uh, Vanessa's sleeping versus, like, the blues and grays and, and sooty uh, New York outside. Getting some of the drugs from Turk making a delivery now. Right. Right when Daredevil shows up. So it couldn't have come at, a, like, a worse time in a way because our guy needs his pills. This is some of the lettering stuff. And again, I wonder, like, is this in a script? Is Miller figuring out, like, do these chopped up little words? Or is that something the letterer does? And maybe Miller sees it and goes, oh, I like that effect. Let me let me write that in. Who knows? Chicken and egg. But I love it. It's really effective. I love it in Electra Assassin. There are a couple of places, and there'll be some, uh, some even better places in this one. Really atypical kind of uh, perspective foreshortening mm -hmm. on the character. We don't see that much of... Uh... Sikhevich doing this kind of thing, and it's That's really your, effective right there. Cartooning in paint, you know, oh, the, little, yeah. the little cartoony leg. Love the just barely splotches of paint for the reflection in the puddles. And how about our like nude down the stair, descending a staircase <laughs> right. kind of gimmick right there? It's cool, man. Try to figure out how you do motion in, uh, in the paint. Saving his reds, using them judiciously. When Very you have much. When you have a red character, you gotta, you gotta use it at the right times. Yeah, he looks so good there. And, and all, almost every time you see Daredevil, he looks phenomenal. Such an interesting, like, version of him. Our boy's starting to shatter. His, yes. His reality's going somewhere. Yeah. You think he painted this and then cut it up? It looks, looks like it. Yeah, probably. And then little things would be really good, like those hands and the knuckles. Just really well done. It sells out of illustration well. What a create like such an amazing creator for the '80s, you know? Like, he, like he's using those very popular Mad Men kind of illustration techniques of the day, the Bob Peak kind of techniques that we would have seen in the best of illustrated movie posters and stuff. The mm -hmm. Drew Struzan kind of energy, and really hit it hard for years and years. Like in, there in the '80s, he was able to pump the brakes a little bit, do a bunch of inking over a uh, Sal Buscema or whatever. He must have been, like, like imagine, you know, they talk about, like, guys stopping in continuity studios between the Marvel and DC offices. He had to be the darling of comics when these pages are floating around. Like, everybody that's making comics had to look at this and be like, what is this dude? What? You know, like, nobody was making stuff that looked like this. No. And Daredevil successfully res rescues our uh, doctor's wife. He'll do these pieces, too, man. And we've, we've seen it in other stuff where he'll, he will do a little paste up. Yes. You know, a little paste up piece. And it's interesting to see how it works in uh, wh when when basically the Xerox technology was not at its height. These look really good, but we'll see some Daredevils where you could see where the first generation one is and uh, how it gets kind of distilled down. See, this looks like a spread to me. You know, it's two mirroring pieces. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. A lot of this stuff is broken up into like two-page scenes. You know, it does fit as a spread. But I don't know. I mean, it's 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 just strange, the pagination. And then on a reprint, why would you change it if it was right? Right. Goes to see his sister who's a nurse. I think a nurse to get more drugs from her. And I don't know if he kills his sister here. It's it's there's some weird stuff in this book that I'm not totally clear on what happens, but he does definitely grab a knife from the kitchen. And he gets to stay in the uh, the closet, but he has to keep quiet because since, since he's on a date. Right. And then whenever he sees her underwear on the floor, that's it. Time to while out. This is the page that is in the Abrams Marvel book by Les Daniels. So this is the first time I set eyes on anything from this. Freak me the fuck out. It's I, a great page. I was really like, maybe I don't ever want to read this comic. Maybe I don't <laughs> right. ever want to see this thing ever. All the eyes are so cool. And then like the eye, you know, in the middle opening, peeking through the door. It's and really I, neat. And I, and I think this, like the, oh, Jesus, no way to talk. Like, I think she's, she's toast. Mm -hmm. She's done. 
And look at him just wiling out, man. Pretty good knife, too. Like, it, that knife has a lot of menace in that shape. That little hook piece at the bottom. Yeah. It's just enough to really make it dark. And here's where we have, like, another plot point. See, there's so many... There's a lot of stuff happening here. We got Vanessa's story, the Doctor's story. We got the blind girl's story, Matt Murdock. We got Victor's story, Kingpin's piece. There's there's a lot happening in there 60 is. pages. And it's cool to see the supporting characters like the Doctor, who is sort of extremely capable, right? Like, he's able to wake Vanessa up and to manipulate her. Yes. You know, like, he's he's sort of, like, trying to pull his weight here. And this is Daredevil trying to, or uh, Murdoch trying to bring Cheryl back from whatever drug stupor she was in. You know, like slowly trying to wean her off of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to watch her while he's uh, making a, a a building of toothpicks for some reason. Oh, uh, making his plans. How he's going to, how he's going to go rescue her husband, the doctor from the kingpins. <laughs> the blind guy needs visual aids. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy this color palette. It feels like pastels that I associate with a certain part of 80s art. Yeah. I, I imagine so much of like Sienkiewicz wandering around New York and looking at galleries and just drawing whatever he's finding. You know, like this has a little bit of that kind of pastel impressionistic look. And like you've seen this guy on the street with his pants pulled up to his nipples and with like his like white t-shirt and kind of like his his hunch. Yeah, all of it. The wild hair. I've seen uncapped. that guy. Like the page designs too, like leaving some some of this open space, this negative space. There's some of your mixed media. I always wonder about how they do this kind of stuff. There's like the nuke face papers, mm -hmm. like like where where what are the lines of legality on on this kind of thing? I used to always wonder that too. Like, how do you generate it? How do you if generate it's not it for all sure? lifted from something? Because sometimes they're relevant, the articles and things. Very often. Yeah, in fact, every time I've seen it, it's relevant to the to the thing. So. You know, is it all written by Alan Moore or something? And this is where you're like, XK, like, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. Like, well, like what are we deal doing with here? Amazing. Yeah. What a what a bold drawing. Look, those eyebrows are just everywhere. And and you could see, like, like a Kyle Baker, come uh -huh. like, springboarding on top of this. It's cartooning. Himself. Yeah. It's such cartooning. It's it's really cool. It's, it's, it's really fascinating. It's like, it's cartooning, and you're taking, like, the respected illustration techniques from outside of comics, but applying it to cartoon imagery. It's sort of like everything to me as a kid. Like, like, uh, like I divorced myself. I have, I painted a lot and, and I still, you know, have a lot of paints and stuff and I just look at them. But like, I like cartooning. I want to cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, and like when you play with that stuff, but when you see this, it's like, you can do both. You really can do both. A lot of drawing in color. Yeah. That speaks to me a lot, especially now that everybody can work in color. It, it's uh, This is very instructive. I, I sometimes think, like, when I look at this stuff, like, Frank Miller, one of his underrated contributions to comics is is unlocking Sienkiewicz. Yeah. And Sienkiewicz was great already, but what he does in this graphic novel and an Electra Assassin, it changes comics. It changes almost what you can imagine. Yeah. And I don't know if you get there without the Miller collaboration. Yeah, yeah, you see glimmers, man, of... of uh clearly a Sienkiewicz. mega talent and who knows maybe alan moore unlocks him or something like that but it would have been different you know like what actually happened was miller did it yeah so you know tons of credit because i really do think this changes comics his skill set is so much more vast than just illustrator oh yeah 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 i mean there, there's the the intellect behind it right uh the i said it before say it again man the way chris claremont explained it was that uh Sienkiewicz is incredible he's one of the only artists he knows who's able to draw subtext. Yeah, and it, it makes me think, like, we ought to put a demon bear under the under the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we'll do the demon bear saga, three issues or whatever. It's manageable. Once again, just love the, the caricature this guy has become. <laughs> this, hiding, hiding under the desk as the cleaning lady's coming in with his knife. Like, it, it's all there. This is this is a great sequence, and, and this goes with your argument about the page turn. I was going to say, this is a sur Cause this surprise, because this is a really clean page compared to what you get whenever you get to the next panel. <laughs> right, and, and, it, and it helps the... As gross as it might sound, the comedy of the thing, because he's just like, smells like egg salad, yes. like, uh, oh, just the cleaning lady... Just a cleaning woman grabs a knife. Then you turn the page and you see this. That's funny. 
That's funny to the Red Room dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he takes the time to like clean it up. And he's just a mess. I mean, it feels like there's like intestines hanging from him and shit. Yeah, he really uh, le- leaned in. Sinkevich leaned into that that blood effect. That is an impressive blood pool. There's a lot going on there. When he starts to do the painting stuff, you know, he's doing like jobber covers and stuff, like and, and using the painting techniques, you know, or the the new mutants and things. But like, what is the Cro Magnum missing link stage? between that so was he it was it all just practice in front of our eyes was is was there a nice healthy sample i think we asked him that question and he doesn't give a simple his his answer skills are like uh his art like it's it's abstract it's 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 more than just surface level my guess is that we see most of what it, what he does i feel like it because too, one, he's working, working a lot Right. And in high demand, like when you're that busy, you don't have that much time to develop or to not show some of the developments. Yeah. And he also is is very fearless, which makes his stuff great. Like I look at this red line for some of the hair. It's such an unusual idea. And I don't know if it's I like it, but also like I could see doing it and being like, "Mm, I won't do that. I don't I don't want that. Yeah. But it's here. He's showing it to us, you know, so I applaud that kind of stuff. And I I do think it looks cool. Yeah. But it does feel like a guy who's pretty brave and like, I'm going to try something new here. And and you're right. If you don't see it again, uh, you know, in, in these pages, it is just a guy that's going for it. Boy, the showdown is pretty good. Cutting back and forth between Kingpin, the doctor and Vanessa. And get a sense of like that doctor's really like uh, he he may not succeed against Kingpin, but he's not going to meekly give in. Right. This is great. I'm reading this and I'm just I like cats. That's cool. There's a cat there for him to play with. This is a cat comic <laughs> that'll pay off in a little while. Yes, it will. <laughs> Chekhov's cat. <laughs> and then here's the here's the here's the big moment. Yes. You the know, payoff. Escape. And and this girl, like, she responds heartily to the doctor's voice and his bedside manner and things. That impresses Kingpin. When his voice comes over the loudspeaker, he sees his love wince and cower mm-hmm. and get scared. And so that that's a, that seed is sown earlier. And now when we get to this place, she stabs me, she shatters me. His one love. And she's tormented. She's freaked out by him. And look at the brow. You know, we pointed out earlier sort of the detail to the eyebrows. It is just abstract. Yeah. Constant. Just shattered. Right? It, Barely human in that image. It, uh, it it almost doesn't work without the juxtaposition of other panels. Yeah. You know? Like, if, if that was just on a canvas, maybe, you know, maybe you would see it as eyes. You know what, man? I was looking at this on our monitor, and it feels like um, that has influenced the pen and ink drawing of Daredevil's costume. You yeah. know how, like, like I'll see guys that where it's really a shape right. and just barely enough lines to show fingers or whatever, and it feels like it's there. Yeah. I don't remember it before this. Yeah. But I do know, I do see people draw that way now in in black and white. Yeah, yeah. There's a Tim Sale kind of line mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, it's a pretty neat interpretation of uh, Daredevil. And here we go with our poor cat. <laughs> and then this is like an interesting sequence that just kind of chews up a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of page count, man. It's just him trying and retrying the hook. Mm-hmm. Like, what is that approach? Comics aren't just for kids. Like, uh, you know, even superheroes have to, aren't perfect. Is that is that what we're, you're telling us here? Yeah, it's a weird, almost a MacGuffin. Yeah. Like, Daredevil's trying to get into this building safely and, you know, to rescue this doctor and without Kingpin knowing, and it's really hard. And it's it proves to be kind of unnecessary, but right. we don't know it at this stage. Which is good. That might be great writing. Because it would be really easy to just, like, not have that because we don't need it. But Daredevil wouldn't know that we didn't need it. Sure. These Frank Miller works for as over the top as they are these Sienkiewicz pieces like even the Mazzucchelli's they feel so tight you know this even feels tight yeah I think that's something he loses over time Miller and yeah. it's probably because he doesn't have who knows what maybe you know there's a little more editorial input this is a weird work so maybe he's, he's listening a little bit more but I feel like that's something that, that goes away in later work and I drift further away I do wonder also if maybe there's like a pressure of the day when all when 
you are being held up as the person who's going to who who is transcending the, the the form, and you're being interviewed by Rolling Stone and stuff. If there's an inherent pressure to that, where it's like, let let me give this another polish. Yeah, you know, let me give this another glance. And this is like eighty six or eighty seven, the release date on this. This is like Dark Knight time. All this shit's happening the same time, virtually the same time. It doesn't make sense that one guy is capable of producing this volume of work in a, such a small window. It also makes you wonder, like, what are the demons that drive you to produce this volume of work in such a small window? Yeah, like, if I say the word caffeine, I don't think we can be sued. I'm not even <laughs> suggesting that, although people have suggested such things. But I'm saying, like, psychologically. Like, I heard somebody talking about um, Kurt Angle Olympic training and, and swimmers because it's such a... Uh, it's up to you. Like this isn't a team sport. You have to figure out how you how you can push yourself to that extreme. Like some people have it for whatever reason. It's yeah. their wiring. It's their upbringing. Who knows? Maybe it's a traumatic thing somewhere. Miller seems to have that in yeah. a way that other cartoonist Marvel DC guys don't really have it in this right. era. Uh, as an aside, man, I was on a movie set with Kurt Angle, and he had to play a fighter who was you know, get getting to round 10 with a guy or something. So when they're setting up the scene, his job is to, like, get himself winded. Yeah. This dude is doing laps around the Peterson Event Center, and when it's time for him to do his thing, they still have to call out the spritzer dude to right. douse him with freaking Perrier mist. Yeah, that's what they were talking about in this thing where they were talking about conditioning and stuff, because, like, as berserk as these guys train... I guess you can only train so much with things like like bulking up muscle or whatever, but the aerobic thing, I think you can train like y that's where you get those ridiculous training sessions. Go go in go into Japan for for that for that month when I started and when I came back, like it got to the point where like I could walk from the second that I wake up to to the time it's time to go to bed. Like yeah. like all day all night I could just like walk forever it got to the point where i had to come home uh, bought a bike and started like riding because it's like i'm getting no more fitness um I'm, by just taking it easy see more of this gimmick so this is my like favorite page of lettering because of the way it's that choppy presentation but also it follows his fall you know falling down yeah i love it i think that's so cool and again i wonder like man who's who's, who's figuring that out because all credit to the letter if they came up with that works for me that that red mm -hmm. just total focal point in this cool green setup yeah there's your color theory 101 and part of it is to just jank up daredevil create a little stakes i guess man like one of his arms is now useless mm -hmm. here's what i was talking about where it's like you got your generation one painting and then you make your Xeroxes or right. or photostats or something, and you know the, the the color is off. And I I don't think that he chose that. I think that that's a consequence of just the reprint technology. Yeah, you know what you do here because it must have looked good on the original, right? Right. Because otherwise you would just put a put put the photocopy on the first one too. Yeah. There's a uh, what happens is there's a it becomes like a fractal. So like it's dots that put together these xeroxes and now it's dots on top of dots mm -hmm. to create this thing this is your end pages in the artist edition blown up to artist edition size sick man yeah it's pretty good and this guy has found murdoch's house <laughs> his second shot at cheryl this looks like garrett it really does there's some funny business there with turk Trying to try and explain Daredevil's here. It's so much like Turk almost works. He's, he's practically Daredevil's sidekick, but also hates him. Like he runs out of there. Daredevil's in the elevator. Check out this template stuff, man. Yeah. All credit to Sienkiewicz on that set of gimmicks right here, man. But it, it's a weird template. It's like he invented this one himself. Like cut it out on his own paper or something. Like I, like I don't know that stencil. Yeah, I didn't even consider that because the Buddha looks the same. Like maybe that's a repeat of a stencil, but yeah, you're right. Like uh, there's a lot going on in that one. That reminds me a little bit of um, World War Three and uh, Peter, Peter Cooper. Cooper's uh, yeah. some of his work, like the system. Oh man, look at that! Look at that kingpin! Incredible. Yeah, and just destroying his house. Yep. He's off the ranch, man. Like she was his last tether to civility and decency to to goodliness now it's done and what does a man do when when that situation occurs you, 
either go out, go get you a hooker real quick and try to use that as a band-aid or some shit, or you put yourself 100% into the work. Right. Easiest way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. Is that the expression? <laughs> <laughs> somebody needs to, Daredevil needs to whisper that in Kingpin's ear. Yeah. And we see Cheryl in this psycho working out their final uh, confrontation. Yeah, man. And that's Chekhov's uh, fire poker, mm -hmm. like established a little bit earlier when Daredevil had her at the crib. It's a pretty rough scene for her to have to like kill somebody. Like, man, she's had a rough, rough little vacation here to New York City. Yeah, she did. No wonder she wants to go to Paris. She's going to need the uh, therapy her husband was providing Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. This is a gimmick that was established by Victor where he saw himself as like a knight in shining armor. And look, by the way, our cat's okay. I think that's just inside her head. You shut up. <laughs> so we have the doctor. He's reunited with his old lady and Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Getting off the plane. Yeah, Kingpin basically just giving up, you know, doing doing the what's best for Vanessa yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, like, like the least selfish thing that he's probably ever done in his uh, psycho life. It's a good bit of writing. It makes you feel bad for the kingpin who, like, you really shouldn't feel bad for ever. But it's it's a good, believable moment. They go out of their way to, to show how much he cherishes her and then gives her up. It's a good stroke, you know? Like, it when is. you have these comic book villains that are just one note, add a little dimension to a motherfucker. Totally. But there he is, dude. Consumed by the work. He's back to business. I have everything I desired. Yeah, it's the same opening... The same closing narration as the opening of the uh, of this graphic novel which you know thinking about graphic novels early format for graphic novels like Miller's first attempt at writing a graphic novel pretty cool a lot of ambition on these pages yeah and this points out like like Miller and Moore would do the bookend mm -hmm. sequences using the same words with different images to create different effects yeah it's something I like in uh, in short stories, I feel like it, it makes sense for short stories, and in a way, like this isn't what is sixty four pages, forty eight pages, something like that. It's when we say graphic novel, there's range. We've got some that are five hundred pages and more. So this is kind of a short story, and really, uh, you know, you can make everything tie in a short story, like no extra stuff. It's pretty lean and mean. Yes, yeah, very yeah. impressive, and it it does make me think, like you guys watching this at home. One, there's a lot of videos to follow up on. You know, go go check out the Bill Sienkiewicz Artist Edition. But the question I have for everybody to leave comments: What's the second best of these Marvel graphic novels? I I, I have a I have a guess in the running for myself, man. Heartburst by Rick Veach. Interesting. Is is a super high level to me. A bit um, of a deep pool too. You know, not the highest profile of all of these things. Yeah. Do you have something in mind? I don't. No. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see what comes back because uh, you do see these and I have quite a few of them on the shelf and I shelf them with my Catalans. So like the European albums, you know, I think clearly these were uh, looking at those as a, you know, as, as a source of inspiration. Man, now I want to read Heart Burst. Should we get out of here? Yes. All right. K-Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design, coming to your local comic shop in March. Tell your local comic shop to reserve a copy for you, to pre-order a copy for you, whatever their system is. Tell them which cover you want. There's four really good ones to choose from. And uh, join me on Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can see some of my original art and how I make the comics I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings is beginning in March as well. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Every issue of Red Room is completely self-contained, and there are four issues that are going to be coming out monthly uh, in this trigger warnings season of red room comics for 2022 you can pre-order those comics at my link tree in the description below you can read those comics today on my uh, patreon i put everything out uh, on uh, my patreon before it hits paper for the price of three dollars you'll get the complete archive be able to read all of the anti-social network on there and uh see what is forthcoming in the Red Room universe. Uh, all those links in the link tree in the description below this video. Jimmy, what else? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, give them the merchant orders. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.